all right guys welcome back to the channel sorry about the last video it was like my mic audio was fucked up i'm not sure exactly what happened but um i think i i figured it out now so should work now sorry about that so what the video was about was the poison necromancer and i wanted to give the poison necro also a shot in season two so what we did here is first for the stat page we are level 90 we have max resistances we have 106 strength, so we can use our Trank's Helm. That's a requirement for that. Nothing into Dexterity, everything else into Vitality, so we get the Life Cushion. The reason why I didn't go Max Block this season around was actually because Blood Warp right now heals you for the amount drained over 3 seconds. So you get life back after you Blood Warp. Last season, the point was to, to go max block and go lower life pool was to refill your life with life after each kill effects quicker, basically, because those are flat and the percentage life that you spend using blood warp was, uh, was like lower when you have a lower um, maximum health pool, basically. So that way, the life after each kill effects filled you up faster. Right now, due to that change that we gain life back, if you cast Poison Nova then, or like teleport, cast Poison Nova, move a little bit, teleport, and so on, you still get regen life from the Blood Warp itself. And I felt it wasn't really necessary anymore, and I like the larger health cushion. Plus, the Poison Nova actually goes off real reliable right now because we can just teleport Poison Nova. Sometimes the monsters would hit you, you went into block animation basically and your poison over cast was basically broken and you didn't even cast it so you didn't gain life after each kill back and they could just attack you after like in, in a sequence and kill you that way. So I, I wanted to try it this way right now. For our gear, I actually switched the camera position, I hope that is better right now. So I'm just quickly going over the gear. So for poison, you really want to get a death web, right? Because it gives so much good stuff for you. I only got a plus one one, sadly. Um, that one I even dropped, so I'm not sad at all about it in general, but it would have been nicer with a plus two, obviously, plus two to poison bones. And I threw a puzzle box on it because I was a pussy and didn't want to corrupt it. But I threw a puzzle box on it and it just turned out to get one socket, so I was pretty unlucky there. Um, I socketed it with a 5-5 poison facet, uh, which means it was minus 46 uh, poison rest before. And it gives the life after each kill, which is such a quality of life that when you kill enemies you gain life back, it's great. I love that. So that's for the death swap. Then we upgraded our Trank's helm and armor, or chest piece. So we have a plus one all skills Tranks guys, which I threw a puzzle box on as well and oh no, I think I bought that one socketed um, actually. So that one was bought one socketed for like around 1.52 high runes I think. Um, for the armor I bought it as clean plus one and I threw a puzzle box on it and it got two sockets basically. So I got two perfect topuses in there for the magic find. In the helm I have a 4-5 poison facet, so minus 4 poison resist, plus 5 poison damage. For the claws, like the gloves here, I have a 25 MF corruption, which is pretty nice bonus basically, and it has 15 poison damage, which is really important for this build, or like, it's not that important, but it's a, like a, a huge buff to get some percent here um, as a bonus. Like if you get min roll, you, you definitely can see the difference on the tooltip and stuff. For the Drang's belt and offhand, like shield, we only have the basic ones. So I really want to get those with some corruptions or even sockets to put poison facets in. Or like um, put, I don't know, maybe an Istrun for a more magic find or something. So yeah, we'll see about that. For the amulet, we have a plus three amulet. Plus four would be more damage, obviously, but plus three is still fine, it's still good. War traps, 49 ones that I found really good. And then we chose two Wisp Projectors. Out of the Wolverine is one on both of them. I don't care about Out of the Wolverine though in this build. This build only profits from the plus skills. That's basically why we have those rings. And the Lightning Absorb and the Magic Find are the bonus basically on the ring. 
So Lightning Absorb is great for example for souls or something that shoot you with the lightning and yeah those can do so much damage and shred you so I really like the lightning absorb on those. Um, the MF is just a small bonus. For the bone build like it was way mana in more way more mana intensive I want to say. So I would recommend going for Stone of Jordans for the bone build. But for the poison one we gain mana after each kill from our death web so we don't really have any mana problems. Um, that's why I chose to go for Wisp Projectors, because of the extra bonus stats, basically. Um, I, I'll go to the jumps real soon. For the Merc gear, I still have the same Merc gear as with the Bone Necro, like Inside, Hal's Mask for Leech and Allres, Dark Glow for the Maximum Resistances, String of Ears and 2 Saigon Set. I could go for way better Merc gear, for sure. And Inside isn't really needed because we have this mana after each kill. So we could go even without insight, but yeah, I, I just was lazy until now and just didn't upgrade him at all. So I might just do that some, sometime, but yeah, insight is still really nice to give you some more mana region, right? So it's like, okay, for, for the quality of life. For our skillers, we have, or charms in general, we have poison bone skills all the way, everything clean except for this one, this one has five strength. Those I want to upgrade still and get some plus life or something, that would be great, or some FHR or, yeah. Plus run walk isn't really needed because we can teleport so easily, but yeah. Um, for the charm we have a Geats, which is pretty low rolled, right? 31 MF is, is kind of nice and 10 reduced vendor prices is really low, so nothing too special here. For the charms we have some MF charms, this one is nice with Fire Rest. We have some life charms and some lightning rest that I need. Um, that's about it for the charms. Then we have one torch, which I bought for around one high rune or something. It's 13 all rest, so a pretty low one. Um, but yeah, around one high rune if you get a low one, I think um, you can you can find some some torches for that. And the any I got from Lucky Luciano. I think is his name. He does any services uh, on his Twitch stream, and yeah, he's a really reliable guy. Um, yeah. Oh, we got connection interrupt. Let me see if I can just rejoin a game real quick. But yeah, I would definitely recommend you guys to check out his stream, Lucky Luciano. He is a really nice guy, and yeah, I would recommend his services every day. So. Yeah, he and he even got me like one of the best annies that I even got in my life, I think. It's it's a crazy good one. It's like 49 and 18 all res is, is really nice. I can't complain about that. So yeah, that's about it for the gear. For the skill tree. So this time obviously we still max out Desecrate, Poison Nova and Poison Dagger because those are our main damaging skills. So Poison Nova is for clearing, Desecrate for single target. Desecrate tooltip is around 35k right now or 34 and a half and Poison Nova is around 17k. Um, although Poison Nova is over 2 seconds and Desecrate over 3 so it's not that big of a damage difference, right? So you need to keep that in mind. It's not that big of a damage difference even though the number itself shows uh, a lot, a bit, like a 10k difference almost but this number, or like more than 10k, sorry, but the number of um, seconds is also relevant, right? And Desecrate still deals more DPS itself, but it's not that much. So for single target, we want to go Desecrate, or for packs that have a Fanaticism Aura or a Might Aura or something, when you see that, you should probably just Desecrate instead of jumping in and poison overing because you risk dying, but yeah, that's about it. Then we want to have Blood Warp at 0 0.2 seconds. And I have it like at 32 because I didn't plan with all this plus skills that I got. So I should respec in the future pretty soon. But yeah, we, we want to have Blood Warp at 29. At least for the 48 breakpoint it is. I'm not sure about the 75 FCR breakpoint. Because that way, with 0 0.2 second cooldown, the cooldown is already refreshed when you finish your second cast basically or when you start your second cast for example so you can still teleport non-stop 
with 0 0.2 second cooldown. So I recommend going for that level 29 on the blood warp. So you have the 0 second cooldown basically, or yeah, feeling like a 0 second cooldown. And it's really smooth then. I love having a teleport skill that is there on demand and not having to wait like a half a second to teleport again. Um, then we did go for curses this time around. And I have lower resist at level 29 here. Like it, the, the plus skills don't count for the effect of lower rest, right? So we have a minus rest all of 42%, which is really good, I feel, because like po poison immune monsters have a resistance over 100%. And you can break it with lower resistance um, if you can get th this. Um, over 100% resistance below 100%. So um, the value for immune monsters is halved though. So for poison immune monsters, we basically, if we have 40% lower res, we basically shred 20% of the resistances of immune monsters in PD2. In usual D2, it's one fifth of this um, percentage, but in, in PD2, it's half of it. So. With 42%, we can shred poison immune monsters that have up to 120 poison resistance. So I would recommend going for some kind of threshold there. Either going for 30%, so you can shred 115 monsters. I'm not sure if there are any or many monsters with 115, but there are still some that have 120, and we we really there, there's still some poison immunes, right? You can shred all of them, but it's way more reliable to have like at over 40 here so we can shred even those with 120 percent poison resistance so good that's that's nice um for because we invest into those curses i didn't have enough points to go for golems i think i would have gone for golems but we are going for revives now those need don't need to do damage for us they just need to tank basically we with one point, or I have two points right now invested into revive, we start basically with three monsters, which is better than last season, because last season we would have only gotten one um, revive, basically. So right now we have three revives, which is already kind of nice. Um, I like that also for ubers. I think I will do some ubers pretty soon on this guy. And revives are way better for ubers because they tank more damage than golems. You don't need to resummon them as often. All right, let's just quickly go for a chaos run to showcase it. And you will see it performs really well. Like just grab three monsters here. And it performs really well because basically everything is a one shot that is not a rare or a champion pack. And even some rare and champion packs who we still one shot with a poison over. Like here is a fanaticism aura. And I will stay back and cast Desecrate, so I don't jump into that and get one shot basically by all this physical damage that comes in. So yeah, we can basically just teleport around, one shot everything, jewel dropped, I will pick that one up. And yeah, so what's also to notice that with, like I would have gone golems because the quality of life of the golem AI feels better, or like not really AI but um, golem mechanics. So when you teleport, golems just run at your enemies after you teleport it. Right? Oh, those are... Okay, no. Um, so so your, your golems will just run at your enemies and like tank them basically. For revives, as you can see, if we teleport, they are stacked on top of me and they can't move by themselves except when I move. So when I move out, they can also move. And that's basically a little bit of... a, bit, a little bit worse of quality of life because if we teleport, you basically want to your minions to run at your enemies and tank all those all those hits from them. But what you need to do sometimes then with with the revive build is you teleport forward and then immediately immediately run a, like two or three steps back, so your monsters grab the aggro. Oh wow, we got a new geats. Give me a second. I need to check this one. Um, nope. I will think I'll pick that up with my other necro after the video, but yeah, so only a 20% geats that was. So you you still want to just run a quick back, like a step back, and yeah, let let your minions gain the aggro of the of the enemies. 
so you don't need to be worried about tanking all those hits. But yeah, Poison Nova is like such an insane clearing skill, right? So I shoot one Poison Nova in each pack basically. Sometimes two because you oftentimes don't hit all of the enemies. But yeah, it's it's crazy at clearing and does crazy damage. And also for Ubers, it, it still is really good because while the Ubers are poisoned, they can't regenerate life. It, which usually you work around that with open wounds, so they can regen also when they when they have open wounds applied on them. But for this build, it's yeah, it's really good to just um, have some revives to tank for you and poison your uber enemies and yeah, shred them down this way. So it, it just takes a while, but your your revives probably you still need to resummon them from time to time, go out of Tristram and go back in. But yeah, so that's like one of the most reliable builds I have done ubers with actually, but I haven't done ubers that much. So take that with a grain of salt. Probably some kind of, I'm not sure if smiters are really good in D2, but some kind of paladin or like a sealer or some kind of fury druid or such would have an easier time with ubers. But yeah, the poison necro I felt like was really decent too for, for the uber kill. And single target is a little bit worse than the bone version, definitely. So as you can see on Diablo, my Mars just died, okay. Um, so as you can see on Diablo, he takes a little bit, but he still, yeah, he still gets killed after some time. So that's pretty cool. That's my take on the Poison Necro right now. I like to go with the revives this time around, like I said, it's pretty nice. I will respect to hit that 29 all skills on the, or like 29 skills on the Blood Warp to go more points into revive and get more revives. But yeah, that's about it. Thank you guys for watching. I think I will come up with some more content of like um, loot that I find in maps or something that I that I will showcase you. And yeah, so stay tuned for that and hope you have a good time. Have fun. See you soon. Bye bye guys.